Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the change in face of the African-American church at the 21st century. And we have with us as our guest this morning, Dr. Lewis Baldwin, to mm -hmm. talk about uh, how the African-American church has changed mm -hmm. over the uh, last uh, century. And of course, Dr. Baldwin, let me welcome you to the show this morning. Thank you. Thank and you. to uh, tell you how delighted we are to have you. But uh, as I say each time that uh, <laughs> you've been with us so many times yeah, and yeah. to talk about your background, your education yeah, and your experience, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure that all of our members of our audience understand who you are and yeah. the many, many, many books <laughs> that you've written and, the, and your yeah. scholarship and et cetera. But for the sake of the audience, the sake of those few who might not know you, let's have you to give us some information in reference to your background, your mm -hmm. education, and some of your experiences, and then we'll uh, get into the change in face, face of the, the uh, African-American church at the 21st century. Let's all do it from that perspective. All right, thank you so much uh, for inviting me here first, and it's great to be here in uh, during Black History Month. It is. Uh, I grew up in uh, Wilcox County, Alabama, Camden, Alabama, in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, deep roots in the African-American church, particularly Southern Black Baptist Protestantism. Mm -hmm. uh, I matriculated at the public schools in uh, Camden, Alabama in the 1950s and uh, graduated from Camden High School in 1967. And of course, from there, I matriculated at Talladega College in Alabama, was there four years, uh, ultimately receiving a BA in history from Talladega from there to Crozer Theological Seminary in Rochester, New York, where I received the MA in 1973 and the MD of Master of Divinity in 1975, and from there to Northwestern University, uh, where I was awarded the PhD in American Religion in 1980. Uh, so my educational pilgrimage has really occurred uh, very much in connection with the black church. Uh, both are inseparable as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned in terms of my uh, own development. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you're, uh, <coughs> did you at one time said that your father was involved in uh, preaching. Is, is, did you tell us that? Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. My <laughs> father was a pastor in uh, uh, Wilcox uh, County, Alabama, or Butler County, Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, he also felt that his ministry related very much to civil rights. So he was a force in the black church in Alabama. Very good. And so let's, let's talk about <coughs> the uh, African-American church, uh, Dr. Baldwin, and to uh, sort of start us off at the uh, period of slavery. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about uh, the African-American church and et cetera, but yeah. uh, in, <coughs> uh, during slavery, uh, Africans did not have an organized exactly. institution as a church. But nevertheless, they did have, speak to it from that perspective. Exactly. In the South, particularly, now, you did have in the, in the antebellum North mm -hmm. uh, the development of institutional black churches. Mm -hmm. But in the South, we had essentially the invisible institution of the slaves, mm -hmm. where they met in the woods and the thickets and the ravines mm -hmm. uh, to worship their God and to give expression to their spirituality. Uh, so you had in the South the invisible institution and in the North mm -hmm. the more visible institutions in terms of the institutional church. But uh, in the pre-Civil War years we know that black religion developed along both lines. But after the Civil War you get with, with the Emancipation Proclamation, you get uh, the freedom of African Americans in the South and then institutional church developments began to occur throughout the country. So since the period of Reconstruction, I think we can speak of the black church as a national phenomenon uh, spilling over into the North and the South. And, and that, uh, that institution, of course, has taken on structural form and, and, and also a sense of mission mm -hmm. uh, since the uh, Reconstruction period. Mm -hmm. and, and so the African-American church that we're going to talk about today has changed has a changed face yes, yes. in the 21st century. Why don't you, uh, and, and, and I guess we're getting ready for our second commercial break, mm -hmm. but when we come back, what I'd like for you to do is to uh, look at the face mm -hmm. uh, of the uh, African-American church mm 
uh, before it changed yeah. and, oh. and, to, and use this eight minute segment mm -hmm. to talk about that church. And okay. then after uh, the second commercial break, to talk about the second okay. African-American church okay. using all of the scholarship and individuals mm -hmm. and et cetera okay. within the framework of both of those churches. Okay. And so we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. and how scholars today they, are they, viewing the church. And we'll do yeah. that during the last 10 minutes. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. so that will give you an opportunity to use names, mm -hmm. uh, associate some names and activities and et cetera Books with, and, with that yeah. area. And then after this second break, then we'll come back and okay. we'll deal with that last part, the last 10 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yes, ma'am. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the uh, show for the morning. The uh, topic is the changing face of the African-American church in the 21st century. And the uh, guest is Dr. Lewis Baldwin. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Baldwin, let us uh, see if we can pick up at this point mm -hmm. and to talk about the African-American church uh, before it changed okay. uh, during the uh, 21st century. Now. We know about that church largely through the scholarship of some of the pioneers like W.E.B. Du Bois and Carter Woodson, uh, Benjamin E. Mays and Joseph Nickerson and E. Franklin Frazier. Mm -hmm. Now Du Bois published the first history of the Negro church in 1903. Mm -hmm. And it uh, used the tools of social sciences as to critique the black church. Du Bois looked at the black church as a social institution. And I think his scholarship had a great influence on those scholars who came after him. Uh, du Bois publishing the Negro Church in 1903. Carter Woodson comes along in 1921, mm -hmm. publishes a book on the history of the Negro Church. Mm -hmm. And in 1933, uh, Benjamin Mays and Joseph Nicholson mm -hmm. uh, published the Negro's Church. And in 1963, of course, E. Franklin Frazier published The Negro Church in America. And they all were concerned about how the black church functioned as a social institution. Mm -hmm. That black people could go to these institutions to feel a sense of racial unity, uh, to feel a sense of their own personhood, to develop some sense of mission uh, in these churches. But the argument in that first, uh, among those first group of scholars in the 20th century, was the black church, that the black church was essentially social. Uh, of course, Du Bois and, Carter, and, 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 and E. Franklin Frazier were sociologists. Mm -hmm. Carter Woodson was a historian. Um, e. Franklin Frazier was a sociologist. So we can understand that the stress at that time was on the black so, church uh, as a social, social institution, institution. Uh -huh. and how he had met the needs of black people. But there was that critique among these scholars mm -hmm. also that the black church had not done enough to address the social, economic, and political problems confronted mm -hmm. by blacks. Mm -hmm. So this scholarship occurred during that period of the traditional black church. Mm -hmm. We can talk about the new black church later. Mm -hmm. But the, the argument also uh, focused around this question of just how involved the church was in civil rights activism. Mm -hmm. You take people like E. Franklin Frazier and W.B. Du Bois, Carter Woodson, uh, they felt that the church had, had much to be desired mm -hmm. in terms of its activism, mm -hmm. that it was primarily responding to the religious needs of the people and not really responding appropriately to the social, economic, and, and politi political, political needs, needs mm -hmm. of the people. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was an argument during that time. And we know that the life of the black church in the first half of the century, and perhaps certainly in the first half of the mm -hmm. century, uh, of course, proved that because you had a kind of de-radicalization mm -hmm. of the black church in that period from 1890 up to 1955. And Dr. King, Martin Luther King Jr. came along in 1955 uh, with the involvement of the church in the Montgomery bus boycott. And of course, we noticed the uh, 
what the radicalization and, of the black and the church. change in faces exactly it's moving away from a social organization yes now it's more a political it's becoming a political organization. exactly more of a political organization more of an organization that is involved in in the total needs of the black community particularly economic social political Good. Uh, and, of course, uh, the Civil Rights Movement had a great impact on the changing face of the black church. Mm -hmm. That was one point at which the face of the black church changed because Dr. King made the church relevant in the struggle for civil rights. Mm -hmm. uh, he drew on the prophetic tradition of the black church and applied that in his civil rights campaign. So uh, that was very, very important in the mid-1950s. Uh, so we see a different church from that we recognized in the period from Reconstruction up to uh, 1955 when the Montgomery bus boycott mm -hmm. started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so in a real sense, uh, the uh, church, while it changed, how did people react, did African Americans react uh, to uh, the change in face of this church? I think the African Americans uh, on the whole, particularly those who were church connected, uh -huh. reacted quite well because what Dr. King did uh, and others who were involved in his Southern Christian Leadership Conference in the 1950s and 60s, uh, they made Gandhi relevant because many of Gandhi's ideas uh, coincide very much with New Testament ideas mm -hmm. in the Sermon on the Mount. Mount Love your enemies, mm -hmm. turn the other cheek. Uh, so Dr. King and others in the South in the black church had already been exposed to the New Testament mm -hmm. uh, teachings of Jesus. So that made them more receptive to the teachings of Mohandas mm -hmm. K. Gandhi. Mm -hmm. So I would say that African Americans responded well to this changing, changing face of the black church uh, from the mid-1950s up when Dr. King uh, drew on the church as a kind of social and political platform, as a de facto platform for the civil rights movement. Black Americans responded quite well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And, and, and so in a real sense, Dr. Baldwin, that uh, the church, while it might not have been a political, economic, and social organization in, 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 in the first instance, it still had to deal with social, political, and economic no, issues. Problem, yes. And how did this church deal with social, uh, and for, for example, mm -hmm. during this period, lynching mm -hmm. might have been a very, very important consideration. The yes. KKK yes, and all exactly. other kinds of organizations. Exactly. How did this first church respond to? Uh, well, uh, it depends on who you read. If you read, for an example, Gerard S. Wilmore, who's mm -hmm. written a uh, very important work on on, on African-American religion, religion, he argues that during the slavery period, mm -hmm. the black church was very radical with people like Nat Turner, then Mark Beasley and others. Mm -hmm. He argues that the period from 1890 to 1955 was a period of de-radicalization. Mm -hmm. So he makes that argument. But if you look at E. Franklin Frazier, he argues that the black church from the slave period up to the civil rights movement had a predominantly otherworldly uh, outlook and uh, 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 was not so much concerned about uh, the issues and concerns of this world. But the last statement in reference to that was that the black church might have responded yes. to how society that it was in would anticipate it responding to. In other words, they could not do political things primarily because the society that they were in did not allow I for think, political things. You know, I, I, mean, think, I mm. think that happened with mm. most churches. Uh, Gerard Wilmore argued that most churches up to 1955 were Booker Wright churches. Okay, well, hold it and, and hold that thought, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. You know, I... Mm -hmm. all we talked the about the traditional, uh -huh. now the mega church, mm -hmm. the new black the church. The new black church and, mm -hmm. and how it responds. Exactly. To, uh, exactly. Yeah, I, I was thinking, you know, when uh, Nat Turner and others, as a matter of fact, after slavery, the African American church almost had to res uh, be Retreat. concerned er only uh -huh. in religion. Exactly. Because outside of that, you know, the Klan and all those other uh, radical groups that wish to what? 
hold the Negro down. And exactly. of course, any, the, anybody who started talking about and, anything about voting and whatever and, in a church. And the beat back advances in the South. That's right. Uh -huh. you know, so yeah. he, so I, that's why I say the king represented one uh -huh. aspect of changing of the black church. Mm -hmm. And the 21st century represents another. Another. Uh -huh. Very mm -hmm. good. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Lewis Baldwin and he's given us some information in reference to the change in face of the African American church in the 21st century. And Dr., uh, I think you've already indicated how uh, the church faced yeah. the uh, earlier century, uh, yeah. immediately after slavery, et cetera. Yeah. But now this church in the 21st century yeah. is a different church and it has a different face. What made yeah. this church so much different? Let me begin by saying that uh, my view is that the slave church represented the radicalized black church. Mm -hmm. The church from 1890 to 1955, during Reconstruction up to the, mm -hmm. to the beginning of the Civil Rights Movement, represented a kind of de-radicalized black mm -hmm. church. The Civil Rights Movement re-radicalized the black church. Mm -hmm. But since that particular time, the death of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968 particularly, we've seen a, a different kind of developing trend uh, in the black church. And it has to do with the rise of mega churches mm -hmm. and super mega churches. Mm -hmm. You look at mega churches being 2,000 to 5,000 members uh, five, maybe 7,000, but when you talk about super mega churches, you're talking about in the range of 25, 35,000 members. Mm -hmm. And we see now what scholars call a new black church. Mm -hmm. It's called the mega church, the super mega churches, mm -hmm. led by figures like T.D. Jakes and Creplo Dollar, uh, the late Eddie Long. Mm -hmm. Uh, and these leaders are re really considered not only religious leaders, but entrepreneurs, yeah. because these churches, when you talk about the 25,000 uh, members to 35,000 yeah. members range, you're talking about, about some institutions. Large, that's right, you're talking about some large and, churches. Too. And, and scholars like Anthony Penn and uh, uh, Paula McGee and... Uh, Others are talking about this new black church phenomenon, which means that these mega churches are preaching uh, personal enrichment, a gospel of materialism that God wants you to have this, and if God wants you to have this, you're going to have it. Uh, it's a prosperity gospel. So that's what the new black church of the 21st century is all about. And when you look at T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollar and others, they are actually... Uh, defining how we do church mm -hmm. okay. in the 21st mm -hmm. century because many preachers throughout the country in black churches are patterning, patterning their messages after Dollar and Jakes and others mm -hmm. uh, in these mega churches. Uh, they're beginning to pattern their liturgical styles after these churches mm -hmm. and of course their messages. They are messages of Christian uh, materialism. God wants you to have this. If you can believe it, you can yeah, achieve, achieve it. it. Mm -hmm. So this is what is happening with the new black church today. And Paula McGee has talked about that in a book that is forthcoming mm -hmm. on new theology, mm -hmm. uh, new black church theology. And, and Anthony Penn at Rice University has written about that. And Sandra Bonds at... Uh, uh, at uh, Vanderbilt University, mm -hmm. all writing about the emergence of this new black church phenomenon. And what they are saying is that the black church is being redefined. Mm -hmm. Redefined. You talk about the traditional black church, but when you talk about the black church of the 21st century, it's a new black church. Mm -hmm. It's being redefined in terms of its mission priorities, in terms of its identity, in terms of its mission outreach mm -hmm. and at so many other levels. Social activism and, exactly. and all those kind of things, exactly. I would imagine that would play a significant role in, in the difference between. Now, this new black church does not have the same pressure, outside pressure on it as the earlier 
face of the African American church, which is to say that these new churches are not intimidated exactly. by racism or uh, clans or anything else. That they are basically free in reference to parts of the uh, of, of what they can do. Is exactly. That what we're saying? Uh, that's true in a sense, but. Uh, most of the scholarship argues that these, the new black church is less prophetic mm -hmm. than the church that existed during the era of Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. Because Martin Luther King Jr. preached a social gospel mm -hmm. and made the church relevant to that gospel. Mm -hmm. He was concerned about how the gospel contributed uh, to a sense of social action, mm -hmm. uh, how it contributed to the creation of a particular ethical ideal, mm -hmm. Uh, and what we find in contemporary churches, the mega churches, the new black church, of course, is an emphasis on spiritual enrichment, uh, personal salvation, mm -hmm. but not that prophetic dimension that Dr. Mm -hmm. King brought to the church. Mm -hmm. That's what's missing, I think, in this new black church, this mega church, the super mega churches mm -hmm. like uh, Potter's House in Dallas led by uh, Dr. T.D. Jakes. Mm -hmm. Dr. King was concerned about how the church should be, how the church could be a voice of conscience, mm -hmm. how it could be put to the service of bringing about social, economic, and political change mm -hmm. through demonstrations and marches and other forms of direct action, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. nonviolent direct action. But you don't see that today uh -huh. mm -hmm. with the new black, black church, church, the uh -huh. mega church, uh -huh. and the super mega church. Uh -huh. And, 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 and so would you say that this new church is more a church of African-American nationalism, that is black nationalism, than perhaps the earlier church had been? I would say individualism, uh -huh. because okay. the earlier traditions in the black church encouraged a kind of communal consciousness, mm -hmm. a, a, the idea that the black community as a whole was one and that they had to struggle for the liberation of the black community. Mm -hmm. But today there's so much emphasis on individual salvation, mm -hmm. so much emphasis on personal enrichment, mm -hmm. uh, so much emphasis on how I might improve my own situation. Mm -hmm. But I think the church during Martin Luther King Jr. era uh, was put to the service of a, com of a communal revolution. Mm -hmm. Good. That is all people mm -hmm. had to benefit from the changes that occurred mm -hmm. in society. So you had the movement from the slave church, which was radicalized, mm -hmm. to the church between 1890 and 1955 that was de-radicalized, mm -hmm. from the church from 1955 to, to, to roughly 1968, mm -hmm. led by figures like Martin Luther King Jr., re-radicalized mm -hmm. in what we see uh, since the death of King in 1968, through the 70s, 80s, 90s, up to the present, of mm -hmm. course, is the rise of the mega church phenomenon, uh -huh. super mega churches, which are not very prophetic. Mm -hmm. uh, churches that are very important in black life, but are not, as, not in the sense that they were in the time of Martin Luther King Jr. These are the churches, for example, that will talk about the African American economic situation within the church. Exactly. And by using the members of that particular church, able to, in a real sense, uh, put forth Yes. Some of the economic do doctrines that uh, rent, uh, having uh, houses and uh, mm -hmm. other kinds of things that you wouldn't ordinarily think that a church would have. Exactly. But because they do have such a large membership, yeah. they can afford to become involved in renting cars and exactly. et cetera, et cetera. Is that what we're saying? And, and building, uh, build and building uh, homes for the elderly uh, and, uh -huh. and that kind of thing. But what we see today, of course, with this new black church is, I think, a retreat from civil rights activism, mm -hmm. prophetic civil rights activism. Mm -hmm. And I think that, of course, is a serious problem. It is. Uh -huh. uh, and also what we see a uh, developing trends is that uh, young people are so alienated from the church mm -hmm. today. And I think uh, Sierra Lincoln and Lars Mamiya pointed that out in 1990 in a study on, mm -hmm. on black religion and the African-American churches. Mm -hmm. That is... For the first time in our history, we are seeing more African-American young people who not only do not know anything about uh, uh, the church, but they have no respect for the and, church. And don't attend And they don't church. attend the church. <laughs> uh -huh. So that is a developing trend uh -huh. in the 21st century also. And then you have the, the dying phenomenon of the neighborhood church, 